Hi guys, so welcome to the next episode. And now I would like to talk about um, this example. So the utility maximization is the following. Uh, maximize my utility, all right, by choosing the choice variables x and y from R plus subject to PXX, assuming that the price of good X is X, PYY equals income. All right, I'm not writing again uh, less than or equal to income because this is an increasing function. All right, so this example is a very standard uh, perfect substitute example. As you will see, the optimal solution is not going to be uh, always on the interior. In fact, the optimal solution most of the times is going to appear on the boundaries, meaning either x or y is going to be zero. All right, so how do we solve this? Well, let's try the Lagrangian, okay, as usual. So the Lagrangian is the objective function, ax plus by. I just wanna show you that this is not gonna work. Uh, minus lambda times the constraint, which is pxx, pyy, minus income. Well, the first order conditions are uh, the partial derivative with respect to x is a minus uh, lambda px equals zero, and then del l del y, uh, b minus lambda py equals zero. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, with respect to lambda, I just get my budget constraint uh, minus income equals zero. All right, if you solve or simplify the first uh, equation, what you get is uh, a equals lambda px, no x terms. All right, that's weird. But the previous example also had the same problem, right? I mean, not problem, but you know, same situation. But the thing is here, uh, y term is also vanished, all right? So there's no x, there's no y, but the question, I mean, the thing is, I need to find the value of x and y. All right, so that's that's problem. Um, so and then PXX plus PYY equals income. All right. So uh, unfortunately, some students attempt well because you know the X and the Y terms are vanished. I sort of uh, you know came across some solutions which basically try to figure out the X and the Y terms from this equality alone, which you can't. All right, because you have one. Um, uh, equation uh, which depends on x and y, all right, right? I mean, these two do not depend on x and y, so therefore they are out of question. They are useless for you to solve the value of x and y. So you have one equation, but two unknowns, all right? So therefore, you cannot pin down the exact solution for x and y. All you can do, which is not a solution, uh, you just write PXX equals income minus PYY, divide both sides by PX, so you basically get rid of this term. So X is equal to income minus PYY divided by PX. This is not a solution at all, I mean. Okay, uh, so well, what is the problem? Well, the problem is the following. Um, it, 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 there is no interior solution. Remember the Lagrangian is just a necessary condition. Oops, necessary. Uh, but it's not sufficient. I mean, um, so therefore here, it's clearly not sufficient to pin down the optimal solution. So the Lagrangian method does not always work. Uh, well, how can I figure out the optimal solution? Well, simple, uh, by just drawing the indifference curves of this utility function or the level curves and the budget line, all right? Then you will basically figure out where the optimal uh, solution should be. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna erase all this because I just sort of confirmed that it's not going to work. So regardless of the value of A and B, B, I'm sorry, and by the way, A, B are uh, positive real numbers, okay? Um, this is the, uh, the Lagrangian is not going to work in this framework, in this environment with this utility function. So let's start with drawing the budget set. And then, so let's call here 
budget curve. All right. And then I would like to draw the indifference curves. All right. And then I will basically bring them together. So in, on both graphs, this is the horizontal axis is, uh, you know, how much X you choose. And on the vertical axis is how much Y you choose. All right. Well, the budget line is simple. The budget line is basically PXX plus PYY equals income. And we previously uh, drove this. And it's just one straight line where the X intercept is income divided by PX. And the Y intercept is income divided by PY. And the straight line is going to give me the uh, budget line. All right. As simple as this. One important thing to note is the slope of this curve is equal to minus. I usually need the absolute value, but well, it's minus uh, PX divided by PY. All right. And the reason is because the slope is equal to I over PY divided by I over PX, the minus. And so therefore it's minus PX over PY. Now let's draw the um, indifference curves. So the indifference curves, I need the utility function. The utility function is, I'm going to use the blue color and hopefully you can see the color. So it's AX plus BY. All right. So how do I draw the indifference curves? Well, remember, there's not just one indifference curve. There are many indifference curves. So therefore, um, I am going to U of X, uh, Y equals AX plus BY equals uh, some constant K. All right. As you increase and decrease this K, your uh, indifference curve is going to shift forward or backward. All right. So assuming that <clears throat> K is, well, some positive real number. All right. I don't care about the negative values because the X and Y's, remember, are choices and they're always positive, non-negative choices. So therefore, this term will never be negative. All right. So therefore, K is uh, greater than, strictly greater than zero. That's fine. Okay. So um, when K is some positive number, how can I draw this line? Well, simple. The X intercept is basically when Y is zero. So X is equal to K divided by A. K divided by A. And then the Y intercept is equal to K divided by B. All right. So the, the straight line connecting these two points is nothing but an indifference curve. All right. As simple as this. As I told you, as you increase the K, you're going to get another indifference curve, right? This is, for example, K is equal to 2. Is it 2 over A, 2 over B? But if K is equal to 3, it's 3 over B and 3 over A and so on. So therefore, uh, all the indifference curves will be <clears throat> uh, uh, perpendicular. Uh, I'm sorry, will be uh, parallel to each other. All right. And as we move in this direction, that means a higher utility. The important thing that you have to figure it out is the slope of the indifference curve. It's minus, again, because it's a downward sloping curve, k over b divided by k over a. So it's basically a over b. All right. Okay. So here I have uh, two straight lines. All right. I mean, um, two... Uh, kind of straight lines because here I don't have one, but there are infinitely many straight lines. Um, here I have just one. So the budget line is fixed, but the you know indifference curves uh, move in this direction or this direction depends on the k. All right. So um, the thing is, I want to bring them together, and the the the, the, the tangency point and or the uh, uh, the uh, uh, in intersection point is going to give me the optimal point. All right. But here, as you can visualize, uh, the slope of the budget line and the slope of the indifference curve matters, right? Because, uh, you know, I have one curve uh, in, in, in this picture is one, one curve and, and another blue curves and the blue curves apparently are more sort of steep. All right. So uh, what does that mean? So if I bring them together, all right, let's do it in this graph. So the steep, steeper, so the blue curves are steeper. All right. 
So I have this sort of uh, uh, combination. So these are the utility functions, are indifference curves, I'm sorry, and the my budget line. So the question is, where is the optimal point? Remember the very early arguments we had? Um, the maximize utility basically means find the uh, farthest indifference curve, farthest from the uh, zero, zero, the origin point, um, such that, obviously, uh, for example, this is the farthest indifference curve that I draw. However, none of the points on this curve is, uh, is, is affordable. Why? Well, because all of those points are outside of my triangle, the budget set. So therefore, the optimal allocation is not going to be on this curve. That's for sure. All right. So, for example, another curve, this blue line. All right. So, uh, well, again, here are all the points that are affordable. But does that mean that this is the farthest? Well, clearly not. Well, I think it's, it's obvious. So this is the farthest indifference curve that I can get, uh, which is somewhat touching uh, or, or sort of intersecting in this case with uh, the budget set or the budget lines. All right, so this point is affordable because it's on the corner, right? It means you're, I'm gonna spend my entire income on good X and I'm gonna buy zero good Y. So I only consume X. Uh, so it's affordable and it gives me the highest possible utility, right? Anything beyond that is, is unaffordable. Anything less than that is going to give me less utility. So therefore, this must be the optimal point, all right? So here, however, um, the observation is very important. Be careful. I don't know the exact values of A and B and uh, i and pi and px all right so here it was just a hunch and my hunch started with this following assumption suppose that my slope of the budget curve the black line is less than uh the slope the absolute values i'm talking about the slope of my uh indifference curves or marginal rate of substitution, all right? So if this is the case, that means the blue lines are steeper and hence the optimal solution must be equal to x star equals income divided by px and y star is zero, right? But what if, all right, what if my initial way of drawing those slopes a over b was not steeper than the black curve but sort of more, more horizontal. What would be the case? So let me just draw everything again. Okay. So once again, I have my budget curve here. So it's X versus Y graph. And here I have I over PX. And here I have I over PY, very well. So the slope is equal to minus PX over PY. And then here I have um, X, Y, and the indifference curves, the blue lines, right? Um, so they're more horizontal relative to the black line. That's what it matters. So this is uh, K over A, this is uh, K over B. As K increases, I will be on a higher indifference curve, but all of those indifference curves will have the same slope or marginal rate of substitution, which is minus A over B, okay? So here, when I bring them together, right? So I have the blue lines, uh, definitely more horizontal. So here, once again, as the blue curves move in this direction, it means higher utility. So the question is, what is the highest indifference curve I can achieve that is also uh, include an affordable bundle? Well, it's clearly this indifference curve that's the highest. Uh, well, any indifference curve beyond that is going to be infeasible. They're going to be way too expensive. But that guy is feasible because this point is on my budget set, right? Uh, it's on the corner, in fact. So therefore, this is the highest utility level I can attain. 
um, given those you know income and the price ratio so therefore this should be the optimal point so that means so this is an if then statement so if however my price ratio this is px over py i'm sorry i'm making you know such stupid mistakes if the price ratio is uh, greater than my uh, marginal rate of substitution right don't forget that this is mrs this is mrs okay uh, minus mrs uh, all right so uh, if the price ratio is greater than the minus MRS, well then, as we just sort of visualized, X star has to be zero this time, and Y star is equal to income divided by PY, which basically means I spend my entire money on good Y. Okay, well then, one final, I'm not going to draw this, but if, what if these two price ratios are equal? Well, as you can sort of uh, anticipate, uh, the blue lines and the black line is going to be parallel to each other, all right? So that means the highest indifference curve that you can achieve is actually on top of the black line itself, which means 